Welcome to another disaster podcast here at the Disaster Preparedness Summit in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks to Nacho for having us here. And we're finally going to talk about something I know, which are the Medical Reserve Corps and what are they and what they do and how they function in different disaster preparedness efforts. So we're going to talk to Bobby and to Mike. And Bobby, why don't you introduce yourself and what you do? And Sure. I'm Bobby Alcock. I'm the coordinator for the Central New York Medical Reserve Corps, which is an eight county uh, program, regional program in upstate New York. Um, and uh, Part of my bit here at uh, the Preparedness Summit is uh, serving as the chairperson to NACHO's MRC work group. Uh, this work group uh, is composed of MRC unit leaders from across the country who uh, basically try to improve um, how things may work out for MRC unit leaders so that they have the resources that they need and can have access to those resources in a, in a very easy fashion. Good point. Mike, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having us here. Uh, my name is Mike Gernick from Massachusetts. I uh, work as a chairperson for the Town of Ashland MRC branch, which is actually part of a bigger MRC unit, which is known as Region 4A in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It's a 33 town collective, uh, extremely decentralized. Each of the 33 towns has an executive committee as a policy group, but still falls within the regional coordinator to the national program. Uh, we've been involved with the MRC in my town and as a region since about 2006. And some of the things that we've uh, looked to do are some of the clinics around H1N1. Locally, some of the ice storms that we've had and mm. where power has been an issue in some of the snowstorms as well. And I'm fortunate to be, even though I'm on the left side of Bobby today, I'm actually her right hand person as vice chair <laughs> for the uh, MRC uh, well work group. <laughs> So in a nutshell, for those that may not be familiar with what a Medical Reserve Corps is, because mm -hmm. we've on my show we've talked about different disaster resources from CERTs to MRCs to mm -hmm. DMATs, but tell us more about what an MRC actually is, and then you can tell us a little bit, because I know MRCs are configured very differently depending on yes. what their function is. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good point. MRC units, I, I'm not sure if any of them are the same as any other one. They're kind of like snowflakes. Mm -hmm. and. This is uh, true. They can be uh, based in townships uh, right up through to regional programs, large metropolitan areas. So it's really the um, sponsoring agency or the lead agency that is uh, looking to have a volunteer presence um, in their community to assist with its uh, mainly disaster response um, in a public health emergency. And uh, so it's really up to the individual community how they want to framework their Medical Reserve Corps unit, um, which is why they run the gamut. And, uh, and for most of us, um, public health preparedness um, within the health departments is our main piece, uh, but we have MRC units that are part of emergency management agencies uh, mm -hmm. that are also um, not-for-profit agencies of their own. They're not uh, affiliated with a, a government agency. And uh, so they really do run the gamut. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, mine is an eight county regional program where Mike's is a township program. Mm -hmm. And mine is a county related yeah, program. That can be both a strength and weakness. Yes. The strength is it, it responds to local demands and how local services are provided. Uh, as Bobby mentioned, Massachusetts does not have county government, at least really? for public health. Uh, corrections is about the only thing that is a county based system. So of the 351 cities and towns in the state, is something like 349 public health agents. So there's much more sharing going on between uh, towns and cities for resources because everybody's under that financial right. uh, oh, yeah. hammer. Uh, but there again, the strength in that is really it, it responds to local uh, control administration and how things are done at a local level. But they are a federal resource, correct? Yes. 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 Um, we're uh, organized nationally out of the division of the Civilian Volunteer Medical Reserve Corps, which is uh, it's situated within the office of the Surgeon General within the Department of Health and Human Services. So, Bobby, how do you exercise your MRCs? Um, for a potential disaster? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it comes down to um, our partners. Uh, since I am housed within a health department, um, actually eight health departments, uh, it's really up to the health department um, and their par um, partners to decide what types of exercises we do. I don't typically go off on my own as an MRC unit and to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, so uh, the types of exercises we do to get prepared for disaster on the public health side may be uh, pods or point of distributions. Mm -hmm. uh, it may also be related to uh, sheltering operations and any medical needs that are within those shelters. Uh, but we've also exercised on the emergency management side of things in the um, actual uh, response mode of doing things like uh, responder rehabilitation. Uh, mm. where we're taking care of the responders, making sure that they're healthy while out in the field. Well, I work for a fire department, so we appreciate that. <laughs> but you're right, I mean, MRCs are, have very different configurations, but training, of course, is important, and I know that MRC has a great uh, training website specific. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of online classes up there for people to take yeah. advantage of. So if people were interested in becoming a member of an MRC, how would they, how would they do that in your area? Well, you could always go to the website to start out on a national level or the regional website in our case. Uh, that would give you a good start. Or your local board of health or a local health, public health agent. Those are probably the best resources to start with and at least give you a direction to go in. Uh, so a lot of places aren't covered by MRCs. MRCs are about 900 something across the entire country. And some, I don't know how many members, 280,000, something like that. It's, it, it, it's big, but it doesn't cover 100% of the geographic yeah. area. Um, and, and the size of the MRCs are different as well. Right, I, I yeah. think your county system is a lot bigger than my regional system in Massachusetts, yeah. just by geography alone. But it works so, for your individual for the area. needs. Right. Yeah. So, and uh, to me, I think the easiest thing to do would be to go to medicalreservecorps.gov mm -hmm. and, uh, and search for the nearest Medical Reserve Corps unit to where you reside. Um, I always recommend to people the idea of signing up for more than just their home Mm -hmm. County, for instance, Good point. Um, you yeah. know, if, if something's happening disaster wise where you live, chances are you're dealing with that as a person in the disaster. Um, so signing up for more, you can sign up for as many Medical Reserve Corps units as you really I want to and are willing that. to travel mm -hmm. to. Uh, so I recommend to people look what's around your area and, and where you would be willing to travel um, to help out. And, uh, and then all of our states have um, state volunteer registries that yes, allow you to that, you know, we? being notified as a, a volunteer to go elsewhere in your state. So, Mike, what's the basic qualification for someone who wishes to be, get involved? That, that's interesting because one of the topics of the work group has been just that, kind of looking at basic there criteria, qualification, competencies. Um, number one, anybody who wants to volunteer. You know, it's not restricted to medical personnel by any means, although the mission is and remains a medical one in terms of supporting uh, large volumes during times of surge, uh, vaccination clinics, which can be exceptional and not an everyday occurrence. Mm -hmm. uh, but really that, uh, each state has its own background check, which is what right. any volunteer is going to go through. Uh, and then be willing to participate in certain trainings. Since it is medical, there are right. recommended trainings and in some case required trainings to go through. We like to see people trained and have an understanding of incident command, at least yes. where they fit in the process. And Basically, just how, to, how things operate at the level of a volunteer endeavor, like a flu vaccine clinic or something like that. Um, the reporting requirements, um, your on-duty requirements. And I think one of the things, too, that, that we kind of start out with and, and advocate for is real personal and family preparedness, yes. which both the physical infrastructure things as well as the psychological preparedness to deal with the issue because it's going be, um, to be one that can kind of strain the nerves at times, too. Uh, dealing with so many other people in need. And I would agree with that because I also am on a DMAT and I've been mm -hmm. deployed to some larger events, including right. Ground Zero. And, and you could take someone out of a hospital who may be an excellent clinician, right. but if they don't understand what it's like in an austere environment, yeah. which, which may be, even if it's a, still their local environment, sure. it may have become austere because yeah. of some disaster. And they need, and I, I totally agree with you, they need to be mentally prepared for mm -hmm. the kind of things they're going to deal with. Yeah. And it's a very different type of I think in most cases a hospital or any, any facility is a controlled environment and it's a protected environment for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, you do have a lot of resources there. A lot of times MRC is going to go into places that are still active sites. Uh, you, know, yes. you mentioned World Trade Center, naturally. Yes. 
Uh, but things well, we like were very that will secure there six yeah. weeks later. Yeah, <laughs> probably um, the most secure place probably. on the planet. Uh, but uh, in terms of some of the wildfires out west, uh, well, and like evacuations Katrina, going on, uh, sure, where it was yeah. it covered such a wide area. I mean, it was mm -hmm. it's really hard to control that mm -hmm. large. I mean, you're dealing with multiple states right. here, so I imagine oh. any number of MRCs were involved at different levels. Yeah. And and like austerity that. and um, chaos are going to be something that um, mm -hmm. you're going to hit into right away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had nurses. Uh, respond to Hurricane Sandy and shelters uh, within um, the affected regions there and you know trying to and they were there you know getting the shelters set up initially and uh, which is incredibly chaotic oh, yes. um, mm -hmm. you know people don't typically bring their medical records with them you know kind of a theory and, true or have and, their and, medicines right. and that's or have their medicines the big issue. and you know and they're dealing with the stress of having to you know leave home and you know end up in an environment that is is incredibly stressful to them so you know for us sending our nurses you know the the idea is um, to make sure that they're going to be psychologically ready to handle for the stressors that are coming at them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because we don't want what we do to um, inadvertently uh, disaffect somebody else who is already completely stressed out because of what has happened to them. Mm -hmm. And I guess volunteering in general would mean, you know, what is your life like? If you have 12 kids at home, it's mm -hmm. probably not a good idea to assume that you can go out on right. a disaster yeah. and not have a primary concern. Uh, those of us that work in public safety, we have a, a, you know, an initial concern with being sure. there. So yeah. there's all these things that people need to think about. I notice a lot of older people uh, like to volunteer because they don't have kids at home anymore. Mm -hmm. Some of them are out of the workforce, so they're, they're a valuable asset. So, yeah, I think yep. it's, a, it's a group of ages that are important too because each person's going to bring a somewhat different perspective mm -hmm. and maybe identify with a particular problem on site that they can help out with. So that becomes a factor too. So Mike, where would people find out more about your area? Is there a website that they can? Well, we know that the mm -hmm. MRC itself has websites, but Right. Locally. Massachusetts Region 4A actually does have an up and functional website. It's going through some changes right now, like they all do over time. <laughs> yep. But Constantly, nonetheless, yep. uh, trainings are listed there. There's a calendar of events for other communities in the region. So you can see what other people are doing at the time as well. And we have a pretty, pretty active uh, listserv arrangement, too, so that we get routine notifications from the region at the each, each interval town basis uh, of activities going on and, and trainings going on. In fact, my newly um, appointed regional coordinator is here at the conference for the first time. Excellent. So it's just become an all, all round learning experience for her as well. Well, I think that's an interesting question, too. How do you get regular? You said there's a loop. There's, of course, we have mm -hmm. all kinds of different ways of communicating. And now I know in California, there's actually a state database that mm -hmm. they can, mm -hmm. that uh, people have to be trained in its use, the local folks that mm -hmm. administer the program. But there's a state database which would help deploy people yes. in terms of a dis yeah. disaster. Do you have something like that? We do. Uh, in New York, it's called Serve New York. And uh, my understanding is is that every state has mm -hmm. um, that something at this point like in time. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of them are called ESARV. VIPs, some yes, of them are have, called yeah. SERVs, um, and uh, so yes, it's a way for um, local coordinators to be able to uh, manage incidents and manage their volunteers. Excellent. So it's a great resource. Uh, a lot of people, they, they hear the initials, but they're not quite sure who the folks are or what they do, so we hope they're a yeah. little better educated. That's something we're trying to push, the idea yeah. of brand marketing, to elevate that MRC symbol up to be more of a recognized uh, resource, let's say. Uh, during yes. a time of disaster or, or need, um, it, it's it's a bit of a road, but you know we're going to try and try and take that one as much as we can. But we know in disaster, and we've seen, and we've had this conversation with some other groups, and we always encourage people to never self-deploy. Mm -hmm. right. So. You know, to be safe, we talked about liability issues, mm -hmm. we talked about the safety of the responder and having the right training, and the only way you can do that is through an organized group of people, and mm -hmm. an MRC is a great place to start because you can be a valuable resource when, yes. when it hits and, and, uh, and know that you're safe and that you're doing things legally and that you so, have a legal credential. And Right, and, and it comes down to it's really just an investment of a few hours of your time mm -hmm. to be able to get you to that level where you can be a volunteer that um, we can actively use. So, Bobby, is there a reference, a website, or any place you'd like to... Uh, for mine, um, I'm located in, uh, housed in the Onondaga County Health Department. So um, for us, it's ongov.net slash health. And uh, we have our medical reserve course site there. Good, because I don't know that I could spell on, and, on <laughs> whatever you said. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, we hope that folks are 
well aware of what MRCs are, and if you don't have one in your area, maybe think about it. It's a great resource. It's a great I, anybody that volunteers, I have to give them credit. It's a great number of people. So. Here we are at the end of the afternoon here in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. And again, we want to thank Nacho for letting us be here. And my parting words are, disaster medicine is not everyday medicine, but disaster preparedness is everyone's responsibility. Thank you so much.